Now, form rule books are very, very complicated things. There are things that are pretty black and white, like the dimensions of this part, the dimensions of that part. You can do this, you must not do this, and so on and so forth. But there will come a time where the grey areas start to manifest themselves and the team principals and the designers will go, well, there's nothing here that says we can't, so sod it. We will. And because of this, we've seen some pretty nifty designs over the years. There was the Brabham fan car, a car that was allowed to race purely because the design of the car complied with a certain part of the rulebook. Gordon Murray was able to convince the FIA that the fan was for cooling the engine, and since the fan did do more cooling of the engine than it gave in glorious sucky sucky downforce, it was legal. But then it was voluntarily banned because Bernie needed to have the privateer teams on his side. There was also the double diffuser which I've looked at before as Honda, Toyota and Williams all saw a glaring hole in the rulebook. A hole in the rulebook that had been pointed out by engineers and designers before being exploited to give the Braun team their world championship as the likes of Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren scrapped to get a properly working one of their own. But then in the late 1990s, some of the teams tried a new novel way of producing downforce to try and get around the rule changes that had happened in the previous six or eight months or so. And, you know, we've seen people try these cheap hacks before, like McLaren's 50 quid second brake pedal or Cooper moving the engine to the back and the double diffuser, as we've already talked about. But one of the teams that tried this cheap hack to try and get some performance was Tyrrell. Now I've got no idea as to how long this video is actually going to be or how many pictures of the thing that is the subject of this video you're actually going to see. You know, copyright is an absolute minefield, so yeah, I'll try my best. There are rules and I've got to play by them. Tyrrell had been around since the late 1960s, originally running mattress chassis and then bolting the legendary Ford DFV into them. The team's success was at the start of its run in the World Championship, as founder Ken Tyrrell was able to secure the services of Jackie Stewart and all contracts with Jackie were handshake deals and keeping word. Whether that's because Ken and Jackie were so close or because of Stewart's severe dyslexia, you choose. But either way, Jackie would win world titles in 1969, 1971 and 1973 in a car prepped by Ken. And in 1969, Matra became the only other car built outside of the UK, besides Ferrari obviously, to win the world title, Matra being a French company. There was the innovative six-wheeled acid trip that was seen on track in the mid-1970s, but the team almost went under completely in the 1980s, as it's claimed the FIA was deliberately trying to shaft Ken out of the sport because by 1984, he was the only team without a turbocharged engine. But despite the lack of funds, Stefan Beloff would take a monumental third of that year's Monaco Grand Prix before being disqualified later on because of the lead shot controversy. Yes, that's how we say it in Britain. Senna gets all the headlines, but had that race continued, Beloff might have had both Senna and Prost and gone on to win. But by the 1990s, it was looking bleak. Money was drying up, the cars weren't getting much better, and in the 1996 season, Sala would score five points. But the season was marred by retirement after retirement after retirement for Ukio Katayama. For 1997, they needed something for a competitive edge. So their lead designer, Harvey Postlethwaite, the man who created the high nose concept and improved Tyrrell's fortunes on track slightly in the early 90s, got to work. The plan was to improve the downforce, this being the effect of air rushing over the front and rear wings to push the car into the ground. It's how a Formula 1 car is able to go through corners at insane speeds compared to your dad's Peugeot. Now given that Tyrrell was struggling for cash and Ken was looking to sell up, Postlethwaite simply found some old parts lying around and refabricated them into something else. The wings were then fixed to the car and primarily intended for use at high downforce circuits. The wings debuted at the 1997 Argentine Grand Prix as Tyrrell looked to gain some downforce on the tricky and twisty South American circuit. They quickly became known as Tyrrell Towers because of the high and wide nature of them compared to the rest of the rear wing assembly, although they have since become known as X-Wings. The term X-Wings being used as they resembled the space fighter piloted by Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles in the Star Wars films, and coincidentally 1997 was the 20th anniversary of that first film. Well, I say the first one. The fourth one. You know, it's, it, it's complicated. But it's at Monaco where they became most recognisable, given that Monaco needs a lot of downforce and that 1997 race was a total washout. I don't know if Olivier Panis' heroics the previous year had anything to do with it, but Tyrrell decided to no-stop Salo to get him up to fifth, and it would also result in Tyrrell's last ever points in the sport. 
The way the X-Wings worked on the Tyrrell is that they exploited a hole in the rule book that allowed the wings to be placed high and wide on the side pods, and were also painted in different colours to identify the two drivers. Red for Salo, and highlight a yellow for Verstappen. And while the team had got a well-balanced chassis and were actually closer to the front runners in 1997 than they had been in 1996, they were actually starting further back on the grid because all the other teams around them had also become more competitive. But Tyrrell was actually onto something. In 1998, the rules changed. The track of the cars became narrower and the groove tyres were introduced in response to the tyre war of 1997, making braking distances a, uh, well, a bit too short for comfort. The plan was to strip the cars of grip and these new X-Wings would play into Tyrrell's hands, so they designed their next car, the O26, with these wings in mind. For 1998, these X-Wings became more tower-like and it actually started to work for Tyrrell because 5% of their overall downforce was produced by these tower wings, and Takagi was solid midfield at that year's Australian Grand Prix. But this then started an aero war with the other teams around Tyrrell's position on the grid. Prost, Sauber, Jordan and even Ferrari got in on the act. But while the Tyrrell 026 had been designed with the tower wings in mind and could just be bolted on when needed, the others were just trying to put on some quickly fabricated wing onto the cars that weren't particularly suited to carrying them in a rush job. Now I can't actually find it in writing or actually find it in video clips, but I'm fairly certain I remember some of these tower wings falling off the cars, which, you know, then gets everybody's safety senses tingling because Max Mosley had a particular hard-on for safety in the mid-90s, especially following the deaths of Ratzenberger and Senna. All it would have taken is one of these wings to fly off and hit a guy in the head, and you've got Justin Wilson and Henry Surtees before Justin Wilson and Henry Surtees. You've also got Martin Brundle crying that it was like someone had been given an airfix kit for Christmas and had not bothered to read the instructions, but I don't think Tyrrell had designed them with Martin Brundle's feelings in mind. A Ferrari was only able to run these wings at the San Marino Grand Prix before the FIA stepped in and banned them on safety grounds, and then Tyrrell's performances started to take a little bit of a nosedive. It was a mix of poor performances and retirements. At the following round in Spain, Rossit failed to qualify while Takagi started from the back. At Monaco, Takagi was once again on the back row while Rossit again failed to qualify. But Rossit did finish 8th at Canada. There were only 8 finishers though, but you know, it's hard to find out whether it was the banning of the tower wings that made them lack performance, or it was the lack of development, money, or just general ineptitude. Tyrrell would be sold to British American Tobacco to become BAR, which then evolved into the Honda team, then Braun, and now Mercedes, with the X-Wings being the team's swan song development. A couple of other teams were rumoured to be producing something like the X-Wings. It's believed it was either Minardi or Arrows. But Arrows does make sense because they tried that thing by putting basically a miniature rear wing on the nose cone. So then, a quick look at the infamous X-Wings, Tower Wings, whatever you want to call them, from the late 1990s. If it's jogged your memory of the time, or if it's something brand new for you, then do give the video a like. And for more stuff like this, if you're not already, get subscribed, and also get that bell on as well, so you never miss out on a future video. Massive thanks, as ever, to the good folk of Patreon for the continued support. If you want to help support me at a more personal level as I buy up images for these things and all that good stuff, you can do so by following the link down in the description, where there'll also be links to Discord and also to my socials. So until next time, I've been Aidan Moore. Have a cracking day wherever you live in the world. I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.